あ,あオディシーグッドイブニングフォンオースト。はい、ありがとうございます。メッセージをお届けしてくれて、ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。Time difference there. All right. Just gonna wait for more people to join. For more people to join. Now I'm just gonna do a bit of an audio test. So if you can hear me, if you can, can you hear me? Can you hear my voice? Okay. So, yeah, he can hear my voice.、Uh, at、uh, adequate level, let me know. If if don't, I will adjust the volume and so forth. But、uh, yeah, audio level should be okay. So, I'm just. So, it's itchy nose.、Um, I'm gonna wait for people to reply. Alright,、um, what I'm gonna do is just do other audio test. So,、uh, yes, with the latency compute to the chat texting, yes. Thanks.、Uh, Yeah, the, yeah, that's normal. All right, so I'm gonna test the、uh, Dex sound of Dex e piano. Just play the、uh, e piano sound from Dex and hopefully you guys can hear it.、Uh, should be okay. Let's just get checked. So, affirmative. Thank you. Thank you, Odyssey. Thank you, Odyssey. <coughs> So, yeah, so in Australia at the moment, it's、uh, my local time, it's uh, uh, 11 30、uh, night time, so it's pretty dark out there. And、uh, yeah, the weather is、uh, it's pretty mild.、Um, at the moment, it's springtime,、uh, so the summer's、uh, nearly uh, there. Uh, Yeah, of course,、uh, it's the、uh, southern hemisphere, so、uh, you know, it's the northern hemisphere. People live in Europe, America.、Uh, you guys can have、uh, winters coming soon, but here it's nearly summer, so just to let you know, I'm wearing t shirts.、So. <laughs> All right, now I think、uh, just 
Okay. I think we can start soon. I think we start soon. All right, just get ready. Yourself ready now. Please get the uh, uh, that DX7 E piano touch. Piano one. Good. Load it into text. All right, so just make sure that uh, you got the uh, text ready and that with the text um, you need to have an epn one patch the dx original epn patch loaded so that uh, because we're going to be uh, look at that uh, quickly go over the uh, summary of uh, i guess the sound design of that epn and we're gonna start working on the uh, improvement making changes and make a new epn patch sound so so all right so when you guys are ready we can start when you guys are ready we can start so, all right so yeah hi everyone so if you're joining now this is party x7 and this is the uh, live session for the sound design using decks uh, i know that a lot of people don't necessarily have a DX7 uh, hardware and the people prefer the uh, DEX interface so I started to you know kind of offer the uh, DX version as well as the DEX version because the approach is slightly different and uh, the use of interface is of course it's uh, the interface is different so I'd say yeah and so people that, that don't have DX7 and too hard to navigate its menu uh, I can offer you just the text version, so nice and easy. You just follow these step-by-step -step instructions, and we can work. We can uh, make the sound together. All right. So when you guys are ready, we can start. You guys are ready. We can start. All right. Okay. Okay. Now we can start. Um, so So what we will learn. Okay. So what we're gonna do is to, uh, to go through, uh, I guess, a similar format as that the Dexter Tubewell Improvement Tutorials. Uh, basically, we're gonna look at the uh, uh, this overview of, or the summary of the uh, electric piano sound design and the develop a plan of attack and make improvement for the e-piano patch. Bear with me. All right, oh. it's very sensitive. Okay, so oh, sorry about that. All right, so now if you look at the uh, arc, uh, algorithm, it uses algorithm five, and it's got three towers, like two bells, uh, a lot of sound that uh, made. Initially for the DX7, uh, they use uh, algorithm 5, uh, just have a simple t three tower with two operators stacked on top of each other. It's very simple. The frequency tower 1 for metallic tone and the tower 2 and 3 that produces uh, medium and high harmonic content. Yeah. The tune, so you got the tune carry operators, uh, basically that's created by carry operator one, three, five, and then you got uh, four and the six producing similar, um, got um, 
yeah, sim similar harmonic contents and that produces a smooth chorusing effect. Envelopes, uh, now you have a tower one, uh, which has shorter rate to decay and a lower level two for metallic tone. So tower one basically creates the, uh, the, the sharp metallic tone, or, the, or it's not necessarily sharp, but the metallic tone that you hear on that electric piano sound. And tower and three have the same envelopes and it just generates that sort of slow decay, uh, medium, kind of harmonic uh, contents, uh, like soft, soft sound, uh, soft decayed sound or sustained sound. The keyboard rate scaling applies slightly to all operators, so it's a bit of a shortening of the envelope from lower key to uh, higher keys. And now only operator 2 has low output level, and that's one of primary, one of the reasons well, that the original electric piano sound is very very soft which is it's which is i guess uh you know trying to it's not yeah it's it's very different to the Rhodes piano but i guess when they are creating this uh e piano sound for that original dx7 they had an idea about okay with a dx7 what kind of you know electro piano like Rhodes sound that they can create and they come up with that. So it's kind of metal sound. So it doesn't have that nice sharp metallic tone that, uh, well, you know, and it take advantage of FM synthesis basically. And then our keyboard very sensitivity is applied to all operators, except only, except for operator five. Um, so it's just, it's static. It doesn't have any uh, velocity sensitivity with that. Okay, so what we're gonna do as the piano patch is soft, we can look into giving it sharp and more solid data. Yeah, so that its approach is similar to that the two bells improvement we did. So we're gonna try to use the uh, DX7 FM synthesis. I guess uh, you know uh, more uh, in terms of sound design. First, check envelopes as I said for producing sharp attack. Now. Uh, he had a chance to watch the uh, my uh, DX7 tutorial for that uh, electric piano. So basically, sound design, just going through the detail of how the sound is made. Uh, the they those uh, the envelopes, unlike the uh, two bells envelopes, uh, the electric piano envelopes have two decade is is a two decade type envelopes. So it's designed for giving that uh, sharp metal attack. So let's just visualize the envelope here. So envelope operator one. So you got the fast attack, fast decay at rate two and level two. So a bit of drop there. Level two is seventy five. So level one, really high, and the level two, bit of down, and the level three just goes down to zero. And slow decay at rate three, level three with sustain. So that's the carrier envelope. Envelope operator two now. Yeah. Fast attack, medium decay at late to level two. So what it does is uh, the sharp metallic tone and basically chum, and it's kind of uh, it's have a uh, I guess a you know shorter decay than the operator wants to give that the metallic tone uh, nice and sharp and short. I guess you can say that. And you have a fast decay at level three, level three. So it just quickly disappear uh, the the sound that the, yeah that's right that the the that uh, the, the overall decay is very very quick that's why giving the nice sharp metallic tone sorry giving that metallic tone so envelopes operator three four five six uh, here look at that um fast attack again it's all the same for that same for the all envelopes and you got slow decay at late to level two, and slow decay at late three level three. Now, because operator three, four, five, six are used for, uh, so operator three, four particularly used for the sustain sound, and original uh, for electric piano operator five, six is for the uh, kind of I think it was like. Sorry, sorry, it's a sustained sound, yeah, that's why it's, it's, it's got the uh, slow decay. 
Sorry, I just got a bit confused with the two bells sound design there. All right, what's next? So, okay. So as the uh, electric piano part is soft, we can look into giving it a sharp and more solid attack. Now we check that the envelopes, yeah, and it's, it's, we know that it's set for the uh, sharp metallic tone. So we don't have to change the envelopes. So which is good, and um, you know, it's, it's it's, it's uh, how to say, uh, changing envelopes can be time consuming, but we don't need to do that. Also, it's good to learn the skills to do that, but for this exercise, we can skip that. Next, think about how you can add a solid attack tone, and uh, you can remember from what we did in the two bells improvement tutorials. What was it, the uh, really important things? Well, we look at the change algorithms. We look at adjusting envelopes a little bit and frequency ratio or fixed frequencies. And then we look at the output level and the key velocity sensitivity. That's pretty much what we're going to do. So, so giving a solid attack tone requires additional modulate. So that means at the moment, the using algorithm far you got three carry operators and three modulators. So what we want to do is to use the carry operator to two and increase the modulator to four. So that's what we did with the tube belts improvement. So we what we're going to do is we need to look into the algorithm interchangeability. Now, if you recall from what we did on the tube belts improvement, algorithm interchangeability is basically finding an algorithm that's very easy to swap from one another. So it's got similar structure uh, that uh, the way that uh, each operator is used is or in positions and the, the use is quite similar, so easy to swap. But giving the flexibility of different type of frequency modulation, uh, you, know, you could have a three modulator feeding into one or you can have uh, just two operators or you can have a stack or branching whatever you want so whatever you can find whatever you can, you can swap and that's what the uh, algorithm interchangeability is about and it's it's a uh, i guess concept that uh, you know took me a while to figure it out why you need to kind of explore that kind of uh, i guess uh, thing with uh, the dx7 and it's, it's i have to you know if after emphasize in every tutorials the most important part with the DX7 FM synthesis is algorithms. And if you can, uh, I guess, swap algorithms uh, with different algorithms and find a way to do something something new uh, using similar algorithms, and that's the way to go. That's that's how I, um, I guess, um, you know, I, I learned in hard way. Uh, you know, it took me many, many years to figure it out, but now, uh, I'm teaching you guys how to do it, uh, so yeah, um, it's a really great opportunity to learn it about the uh, algorithm interchangeability, because when you get that, get that really, um, when you get it right, you can make a really good sound. Okay, so sorry, so I think it's gone too. No, not really go too far. Okay, so look at the algorithms. So now this is similar to what we did with the two pairs uh, improvement. So you got algorithm five and six, which is pretty much the same. And you got algorithm seven, eight, nine. Now, this is algorithm interchangeability. So we'll look at if you look at algorithm five and comparing that to seven, eight, nine, you got algorithm, uh, sorry, uh, three operator stacking. So you got uh, operator three, five, six. And you got this so uh, that basically a uh, tower one, so you can have one tower with three operators, and it's useful for uh, generating harmonic rich uh, tones. Um, like for example, similar to Sawtooth Wave, you can generate that with uh, the um, feedback. Uh, of course, feedback really helps ge uh, to generate a sharp uh, or the higher harmonic tone, like Sawtooth Wave, without need for many operators but that's that's how you can use that uh, for the a tower with three operators stacking 
But for this exercise, we don't need that kind of arrangement in the operator, uh, sorry, algorithm. So we can kind of discount those algorithms there. Now look at the algorithm of 5, 6, sorry, uh, with algorithm 12 and 13. Again, this is what we similar to what we did on the two pairs exercise. So algorithm 12, 13, if you look at that. Okay. Now, if you look at the operator 1 and 2, they're pretty much the same, just two operator stackings. And operator 3 and 4, well, if you look at that, it's the same. But then you got operator 5 and 6 kind of feed into that operator 3. So that's the difference. But you can swap easily from algorithm 5 to algorithm 12 or 13 because of that the similarity with the algorithm. So that's algorithm interchangeability. So now, yeah, so algorithm 12, 13, so you got two operators stacking, and yep, yeah, so operators 5 and 6 are modulators, and directly linked to operator 3 as a carrier. So that's a key difference, but it's still, it's similar to algorithm 5. And that's the, that's a key thing about the algorithm interchangeability. So if you look at the 32 algorithm on DX7, or the DEX, find the one that you think, oh, that's, that's got similar structure. Let's try that, you know, so it's, that's all, all you can do is let's try experiment. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it works, and you just find the figure it out, I figure out what's, uh, what going to happen with that uh, sound design. Yeah, so how to decide which one to use? Well, the tower one with operators 1 and 2 remains the same. So tower 2 with operators 3 and 4 remains the same, but operators 5, 6 are different. You know that. Now, in my choice, again, similar to that uh, tube that builds sound design, we use algorithm 13 because the, uh, you got the operator 6 and the feedback on both algorithms, so algorithm 5 and 13. So operator 6 has the feedback group. And operator 5, that's right, you can, we can use operator 5 for something else because it's no longer a carrier operator. Sorry. So operator five can be used for for Hamaton, that's right. Now okay, so what we're gonna do is to uh, get you uh, uh Dex um, ready for that uh, uh, editing. Well, let's change algorithms, move algorithms to norm and select algorithm thirteen. Okay. Let's do that. So that's just a video. So we're going to skip this section. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to switch the screen now. Uh, right. Done. Okay. So this is the uh, deck screen. Uh, okay, yeah. So we're going to change that to algorithm 13. Now, algorithm 13, so the algorithm section is done at those basically just above the key, so just above, so kind of center, near the center of the keys, at the bottom of the uh, DEX interface. So you got the algorithm there, and there's algorithm knob and the feedback, and we're just gonna touch algorithms knob, so let's do that. Now, before doing it, let's just uh, hear the sound. So that's the uh, original Elect Piano Sound, uh, text version. Let's change that algorithm. So I'm going to increase that number to 13. Now you can see that uh, the, uh, what we call the algorithm diagram changed with the algorithm number, which is uh, quite handy. Tell you exactly the word well, structure. Uh, not necessarily accurately represented, but at least you can see that what's going on. So now set it to algorithm 13. And so let's hear the sound there. Now, don't get too scared because this is kind of a usual thing with FM synthesis. When you change the algorithms, you get sound like that, too much modulation going on, but don't worry, yeah, we can fix that. 
so just now let's go back to the screen uh, the uh, tutorial screen just gonna, okay let's go back to that so now we have a four modulators and two carriers instead of three modulator and three carriers for algorithm five and again i mentioned about the algorithm interchangeability and having more modulator gives a flexibility in this case not not necessarily every time but yeah on this case that's that's what it's doing so once you've done that change the algorithm and now i think it's explained it Ooh. press the key and what will happen yeah did that So yeah, it's too much modulation of operator four, five, six. So yeah, so whenever you change algorithm and you got the algorithm that have a lot of operators kind of fit into one carrier, uh, you're likely to encounter this kind of problem. It's too much frequency modulation going on. So you just have to um, you know, adjust um, other parameters uh, as necessary. So it's not a big deal. So yeah, just to let you know, if you're new to that FM synthesis, Okay, so what we're gonna do is to now, we will create a hammer tone using operator five. And we will apply what we learned from the tubers improvement. So if you've already watched the tubers improvement, you kind of, uh, I guess, uh, guess what's coming next. But if you don't, haven't done that, that's okay, because we're gonna go through that uh, step by step. Okay, just check what, we have to, what else we're gonna cover. So we're gonna do turn only operator three and five on. Okay. So we're gonna I'm gonna change screen. Uh, let's see. Oh, sorry. Quick time player. Change the screen. Mm. Oh, sorry. Mm. There we go. All right. Okay, so that's the deck screen. So what we what I'm gonna do is to uh, have an operator three and five on only. Now to turn off operators, uh, turn on and off operators. You got the operator number here, one, two, and so forth. And it is a little kind of like a gray area there, slightly lighter gray area there. That's that's where that the uh, switch is. Uh, so here you go. So if you click the number. The uh, number kind of the white kind of disappear, so you can see that, and that means off. So we're gonna off. Uh, we're gonna off number operator four, and we're gonna turn off operator six. So you should have only um, operator three and five on. As you can see from the screen, you can only see that operator three and five. So let's see that. Okay. Five, three on. Five and three. Yep. I'll change the screen. Okay. So we've done that. Okay. So. So this is what we're gonna do. We just change frequency ratio. <coughs> make sure yeah <coughs> screen is correct screen so <coughs> so once we turn it off the operator uh, oh, <coughs> excuse me turn it off all other operators what we're gonna do is to check the operator five frequency ratio and you can see from that uh, screen and the text it's uh, frequency is set at one and we're gonna change that frequency ratio to fixed frequency and then we're gonna adjust the fixed frequency as well. So just to check the what we have, what else we have to do. Yep. So we will set the uh, fixed frequency to one hundred fifty-eight point five hertz. Okay. So we're gonna go through step by step here. So turn fixed switch on. You see fix. That's right. All right. So we don't have to, we can just go through that on the screen. So we're going to change it. Uh, I'm going to change the scene again. So it's going to be a lot of switch over back and forth. So, yeah. 
Okay, now, so look at the operator file. Uh, the and the F, it says, uh, we're called the June course file, and you got this little uh, kind of display, got F equal one, and this is minus seven. Minus seven is the June. The one thing I don't like about the DEX is that uh, you're putting the frequency and the minus the digit together. It's like well, it's, it's it's yeah, it's very confusing, and it's, you don't see if there's if the digit is zero, you don't see that the digit. So it's not it's it's not necessarily consistent. So here really you know to sound designs like oh that doesn't make sense. It's a bit strange because it's a equal frequency equal one minus seven. It's like what does it mean? I have no idea. But I know it's 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 yeah kind of trying to summarize it, but it just gets too confusing for me. Okay, so uh, what we have to do is to that's right change that uh, to fix now from ratio to fix frequency. So we need to check this uh, big switch here next to that little display f one minus seven. It says ratio and it's got the uh, uh, orange LED light. It's um, on and it got fixed so this is a switch between ratio and fix now the difference between ratio and fix is a ratio is whenever press key a, the frequency that it's going to change with the key position so if it is if you put the ratio of uh, 1.00 so if you press c c3 key that means it produces sound as c3 and if you put the uh, ratio uh, 2.00, that means if you press uh, C3 key, and it will generate uh, one octave up, so that means it's a C4 key sound. And that's the ratio. So, and then if you press a C4 key, and it's going to produce a C5 key was because one octave up. Now, fixed one, whatever you set the frequency with a help, uh, you know, frequency measured by hertz and that's that regardless of any key that you press it's going to just generate the same tone across the key rate so that's the difference with ratio and fix in case you didn't know if you're new to the uh, dx fm synthesis so that's a handy thing to remember now i, I just changed that the ratio uh sorry turn the switch to fix and you see the turn 10 hertz the minus seven that's the uh, detune value. Uh, it has a temp hertz minus seven. It's like look at the bit, little bit of mass formula, something like that. It's, it's confusing. Okay, so that's that. And because we need to set the uh, uh, frequency to 158.5 hertz, we have to use this uh, uh, this coarse knob, and they increase the set from 10 hertz, 10 hertz to 100 hertz. So just let's increase that. Okay, so 100 hertz. Yeah, so that's pretty simple. So I just increase that uh, knob, the course fixed frequency from 10 to 100 hertz, and then use this fine knob to get the 158.5 hertz. The the reason why that I choose 158.5 hertz is that it's kind of sits in a sweet spot in terms of generating hammer-like tone not too much harmonics but you still got a bit of low end so it's it's a really really nice uh, sweet spot okay so increase the uh, this fine note and you can see start to see the change in the frequency so i started going up from 100 hertz now 125 28 30 34 38 now i get to uh, where is it? Yeah. So now it goes up to 158.489. So basically 158.5 hertz. So that's what you want to get. Now, so, uh, <coughs> so just to uh, make sure everyone's um, um, catch up with the uh, what I'm doing. So just making sure. Uh, that we just changed the uh, operator five fixed frequency. Okay, all right.
Sorry, I didn't see the message there. Uh, Mr. Griorin. Hi, Miss. Hi, going. Hi, Mr. Griorin. Sorry, I didn't see the message. Message. All right. Okay, so we changed that the fixed frequency for operator five. So hope um yeah. Sounds like everyone's um, okay. So we can move on to the next step. Okay. So what we do? Check the screen. Yeah. So we still got on the screen, the uh, text screen. So now, so because we change the fixed frequency, and I'm just, just curious. Let's just hear what the sounds like. Well, you may say, well, that doesn't sound like Hamadon, does it? No, it's what we did with, we just, um, we just fixed the harmonic content, but we haven't fixed the envelope. So that's something we have to do. Um, so yeah, you know, it's good to generate us harmonics, that necessary harmonics. But yeah, again, synthesizer, you know, it's envelopes so is very important. It's it's any synthesizer, analog or digital or FM, it doesn't matter, regardless. Okay, so what are we gonna do now? I'm gonna change the screens. Moving back to tutorials. So now we cover this section here. So that's all right. Press five on. We did that. So we are, so we are hitting notes. Apparently the five envelope is not for attack. So that's what happening. Yeah. We got the light harmonics there, but envelope is not the uh, light one. So we will change operator five envelope first, because otherwise it's just hard to make it sound because it's just hearing this noise. Okay, so let's work on the envelopes, operator five envelope. Sorry. Now, <coughs> okay. So if you look at operator five envelope. Now this is a table that, that shows you the uh, operator five envelope. But what we want to do is uh, just you guys to familiarize the familiarize with the DEX interface and how to check envelopes value. We're gonna yeah we're gonna just uh, spend time a bit a uh, bit more uh, covering that um, envelope uh, menus there or envelope I guess you can say parameters. Okay. So what we're gonna do is to uh, look at the operator five, and you got the envelope there. You got the uh, what I call it, the visual uh, information. It's yeah, this uh, envelope graph things, which is okay for just looking at what's the envelope, etc. As at a quick glance, but when you do, uh, I guess uh, you know, uh, I guess I'll say fine tuning or you know fine setting of the envelopes. You can't really rely on that because kind of sometimes misrepresent envelopes. So just be careful with this uh, graph. So, okay, so what we're going to do is uh, look at the light first, envelope light. And if you uh, move the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the mouse, hover over the um, each knob there, it's got one, two, three, four. So it's got egg light and egg, each level, egg level. And so if you put on the operator one, sorry, no, sorry, uh, right one, egg right, and towards the, what call it, you got this uh, dex, the uh, logo, and you got this little screen there, and it's got this tells you operator five, egg level is one, egg level one is 95. And this is, this is a bit, you know, this is, it's not necessarily, um, I, I wouldn't say it's a good, uh, good design because because you have to keep referring to this little screen and the some it's very hard to miss and if you if you move mouse around it just keep changing so 
Yeah, so yeah, I'll, I'll like to see some improvement on this uh, interface there because it's yeah, it's kind of really confuses people. So operator fab rate one is ninety five. Now rate two is twenty. I'm just moving the mouse over the uh, knob. Operator three is twenty. Uh, sorry, no operator three. Light three is twenty, and light four is fifty. Okay, let's check the uh, level, envelope level. So you got one. Uh, it's uh, ninety nine, ninety five, zero, zero. So it kind of yeah, it's you know it's, it's a good report. Oh. Yeah, that's what happens sometimes. Yeah, some for some reason automatically values goes up and down. Oh, I have no idea what's why I'm doing that. So just yeah, just it's a bit annoying because sometimes you make sound and it's like oh that doesn't sound right, and then for some reason because you're following our body knobs and then it's auto, for some reason the body automatically adjusts itself. And yeah, create some weird noise. Uh, it happened to me before, so just be careful with that. Okay, so that's that's how you check the envelope level. Uh, ever you get like a graph, but just be careful; it's not necessarily accurate all the times. Sometimes accurate, sometimes not. And this is where you look at the envelope values there. So I'm gonna switch the uh, screen back to uh, the uh, tutorial screen, so because it's much easier to explain that the envelopes. Okay, here you go. <clears throat> so when you look at this, uh, uh, you can see the uh, the original envelope operators. Uh, sorry, five is a ninety-five. Right, it's twenty, twenty, five, four, fifty. You got level one ninety-nine and level two ninety-five. Now the hammer tone, based on what we did on the two belts improvement, hammer tone envelope. You don't need a two decay tab. You just need a single decay because you just crank. It's a physics of a hammer actually hitting that that's object. So that's that's what it is. Very very basic. So you just need one decay tap envelope, and the envelope is gonna be nice and short. So from two decay tap envelope to a single decay fast move envelope. So that's what we're gonna do. And this is a setting here that we're gonna be uh, putting onto that the decks. So rate one ninety five, no changes. Rate two, yeah, make it faster. So it's gonna be seventy eight. Rate three twenty. Don't worry about that because what's going to happen is that uh, everything stops at level two. So anything after level three, there's no effect. So you don't have to. If you want to change it, you can change it rate three to zero or 99. It doesn't matter. It's not going to affect. So it's just we're going to focus on something that uh, makes a difference with the sound design. So rate two and uh, level two. That's right. So you go level one, it's 99, and level two is going to be zero. So that's it, pretty simple. So just let's check what else we need to cover before we doing that on the decks. That's that, okay. So just let's go back, sorry. So we reach into operator five envelope. So again, so I just write two knob to 78 and I just level two knob to zero. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna switch the screen Okay, and bring the DEX uh, interface. It's so operator 5. We're going to change the, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, oh, operator, sorry, operator 5. So, rate 2. Uh, so, rate 2 at the moment, it's 20. We're going to move to 78. Now, just check, yeah, 78, down. And the level 2, now at the moment, 95, we're going to put it to 0. Now, you can see that the envelope graph is getting shorter, shorter. And actually, well, it's interesting, it's disappeared, but, but in reality, it's not disappearing because you have a huge peak and it's just that. So, see, this, again, this is kind of misrepresenting because the concept of level is not because you can see that actually there is a level there because if you look at this just look at the uh, envelope graph well with envelope it's nothing but it's actually there is because level one is there so you got rate one rate two is doing the order hard work with level one and that's that but you don't necessarily see that 
So that's that's something that again you have to be careful about uh, with the text and design. Can't really rely on that uh, embed of uh, graph there. Okay, so that's what I've done. All right, let's hear the sound then. Because instead of that horrible noise. Here you go, that's that. Now the longer sustain tone, that's come from the operator three because operator three have to accommodate the hammer tones, sharp envelopes, as well as the long decay tone of the electric piano. So you have to have a operator three envelopes. Uh, they decay longer, otherwise if we make it short, everyone, everything sounds like the hammer tones. <laughs> that's not electric piano. So that's the operator three envelopes. It's, um, it's designed to be, uh, you have a longer decay. So, but as you can see, you can hear the hammer tone. So which is good, that's what we wanted. Okay, so that's done. So now we're gonna change the screen. Okay, back to the tutorials. And we just gonna make sure, cover everything. So we did that. Okay, so this is a bit of a uh, 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 summary here S to just to, uh, just to go over what we've done, make sure that no one's missing that uh, step and so forth. So, so far, we changed the algorithm from 5 to 13, check. Now, we changed the operator 5 fixed frequency, changed from 1.00, that uh, frequency ratio, to a fixed frequency of 158.5 hertz. Check. Okay. Now, operator 5, oh sorry, operator 5 envelope, it's changed from a longer sustained envelope to a hammer tone short envelope. Check. Now, that's right. Chorus effect is not smooth as before. Now, it's like 41 steps. So, what we're going to do is to turn on all operators and we're going to listen to what the sounds like so i'm going to change the screen switch over to the uh, text and we're going to do this okay so at the moment operator three and five zone we're going to turn on all operators so put the one down operator two down operator four on yes and operator six Okay, so let's hear the sound then, overall sound. So that's why you're here. Now, so switch over to the tutorial. So that's what the uh, the chorus effect the thing about chorus effect is that the, yeah it's not as smooth as before, and there's just more uh, we still haven't uh, fixed the other problems. That the output levels need to be adjusted for operator five hammer tone and operator two metallic tone. That's true. Uh, now, so what's need to be done next? Well, make change to chorus effect. So it becomes smoother and just the output levels to make the sound sharp and solid. That's probably the two main things. Are we going to do something else as well? All right. Now, so let's find which operator that generates a chorus effect. So what we're going to do Sorry. So move a mouse over the tune knob for each operator. Or you can just look at that, uh, I guess, a uh, text screen there. So at the moment, so this is what you're going to have. So operator 1 is plus 3. The tune, that's the tune. So operator 2, uh, okay, so this one's kind of off, but yeah, we put it on. Sorry. So let's, uh gets confusing. So let's look at the... Uh, screen okay we're gonna just use the text screen 
So operator now, operator 1 is plus 3. Operator 4, they change 0. So here you got that screen there, is they change comes up there. So dex, so you got the dex logo and there's a little screen there, it's they change uh, come up with 0. But here you don't see the insane 0, it just doesn't have that. So it's very confusing for me, I think, because you're used to using DX7 and you can clearly you can see the precise number of the detune setting. Now operator 3, they change 0. Operator 4, they change 0. Operator 5, is minus 7. <sighs> Excuse me. Operator 6 is plus 7. So that's what the detune setting is. Okay, so I'm going to change the screen. So this is the, uh, I guess, sorry, um, what do you call it? Uh, yep, ditching of the uh, uh, e-piano. So you operator one is plus three. And the uh, operator five is minus seven on the operator six is plus seven. So what we're gonna do is adjust the teaching for operators one, operator three, operator four, and operator six. Operator five because the hammer tone, we don't need to worry about that. So what we're gonna do is turn to operator two, four, five, or six off. Sorry, okay. So turn operators one, three on this. Uh, we're gonna turn off the, uh, and I wanted to say thank you for you. For you. Yeah, someone messaged me uh, called David. Uh, he's from France. Uh, yeah, he does have time to uh, watch them, but yeah, there's information there. Yeah, you can visit uh, my Power DX and YouTube channel anytime. Information there is for uh, anyone to learn FM synthesis, so, which is good. So let's get back to this thing here. Now, so that's right, we're going to turn off the uh, other operators. So we're going to turn off operator 2, operator 4, operator 5. And operator six. Now the things thing about the teacher is that uh, it's it's more to do art than science. I think it's it's come down to what kind of sound you prefer. You're gonna have a nice smooth chorusing effect or slow or hardly any chorusing. So it depends on the preference. And it's and it, there's no I guess a single formula to say oh this is better or this is not good. And the way the way adjusting teaching is you just use your ears. That's about it. Uh, it's not rocket science, but you need the patience to kind of fine tune it. So you try different settings and so forth. So this is what we're gonna do. So I'm teaching you this. Uh, I guess uh, my the technique that I developed, and you you can start from the carry operators, which is probably that the easiest way to do that, and then move on to modulator because once you got the carry operators. Right, then you can do that uh, um, modulators and they kind of fine tune that the tune. So, at the moment, so let's look at, let's hear the sound of operator one or three and pick, and you can hear that the ditching, effect of the tune. So it's a very slow chorus effect. Yes, so operator one is plus three, operator three is zero. Uh, so it's a very slow cross effect. Now, which one is the screen is that? Yeah. Okay. So we covered that. Uh, oh, that's right, yeah. 
So what we're going to do is, um, let's try. Oh. Yeah, I think I'll skip this one of the uh, slides there. There we go. So what we're going to do. Okay, so we're gonna. Sorry, I'm gonna go to the next slide. So we're gonna. Sorry, I'm a bit having a bit of difficulty with the slides there. All right, that's it. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. So what we're going to do is to change the detune. At the moment, operator 3 is 0, operator 1 is plus 3. So change the detune, operator 1 is plus 6, operator 3 is minus 4. Now, the, this setting is slightly different to DX7 uh, because that the detune, implementation detune and output as well as uh, feedback and other parameters is different. Uh, so it gives a different result from the actual DX7 sound and uh, uh, DX sound. So that's that's the difference there. And so what we're going to do is to, based on that, yeah, so operator 1 is plus 6. So let's go, let's do that. Okay. So we will focus on operator 1. Now, this is what we're going to hear at the moment. Very slow detune, so we're going to increase that to uh, increase by one increment. We're going to go up, plus So it's uh, what about the getting faster? And we're gonna increase to five. Yeah, getting faster again. And we're gonna put it to six. So that's a really nice setting there. Uh, we've got a ditching operator, operator one ditching plus six. And we're gonna try that on for the operator three. Now, the detuned as any any detuning with a synthesizer, analog or digital, whatever it is, it's uh, you wanna you know put the one oscillator slightly up and the other operator slightly down. To give that nice chorus effect, so that's what we're gonna do. So operator one's plus six, so it's going up. So we're gonna make the operator three going down. So we're gonna go to minus values. Okay, so we're gonna start with uh, the two minus one. So you can move down. Here you go. All right, let's hear that. Now getting faster. Uh, uh, going down, minus two, getting down, sorry, getting faster, minus three, okay, let's see that. Getting faster and minus four. You don't want to go too fast, but you want to just find that sweet spot. There you go. That's nice. So we can set it to minus four. So now switch the screen back. There you go. So so that's what we did. So that the way uh, we. Um, Change the operator one, the tune to plus six, 
and operator 3 d tune to minus 4. Now for the dx7, that's going to be slightly different. dx7 is uh, operator 3 d tune was minus 3, uh, operator 1 d tune was plus 5. That's right. Yeah. So that's the difference there. Okay, there's a message. Uh, just a moment, just gonna reply to this uh, person called Snapple Pen. Uh, someone from Norway. Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't do live stream. On live stream on every Saturday. <laughs> I just can't uh, keep up with that uh, demand <laughs> yes it's doing a uh, live stream every night that's every Saturday will be too much uh, but uh, yeah but I'm aiming to do uh, frequently free as possible you can always uh, always watch the uh, recorded live stream sessions on my channel So that's just session. Yep, yeah, just replying to this person from Norway. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I won't be able to keep up with doing a live stream every Saturday night. But uh, yeah, but uh, you can watch the uh, live stream session. So that's okay. So if you if you realize oh, it's you know it's already started, but uh, yeah, that's no problem. So okay, let's get back to that. Um, Okay, tutorial session. So we changed that uh, the tune. Now, that's we've done that. Okay, so we got the. Oh, sorry, I made a uh, press the wrong thing. Cover that. Cover that. Cover that. Cover that. Cover that. Change the tune. Uh, accidentally press that quick time. What's it called? <laughs> Uh, progress bar thing, so sorry about that. Yeah, the uh, that's right. Now you don't have to do this uh, step there, but but if you if you play around with the uh, the tune, uh, so if you decide to try different settings, the if you decrease operator three the tune further, and it, it gets faster, but the overall quality effect is not sustained longer. Uh, that's because. This, well, it could be to do with that uh, envelopes. I can't remember whether I'm gonna cover that in the, the tutorial, but yeah, but you know, you you're welcome to I guess uh, modify the, uh, the um, my uh, part X seven uh, uh, improve the tute, uh, sorry the piano patch and make your own. So that's okay. We will move to modulate operator four and six. That's right. We're gonna do. So because one because we perfected the um, carry operators chorus effect, so we're gonna move to the, the modulator. So make sure we can find you the find you the modulators uh, and the tunes. So all right. So what we're gonna do is to uh, set the operator six tune uh, uh, to uh, plus one. Oh, there's a mistake there, spelling mistake. And uh, that's, yeah, okay. So what we're gonna do is uh, turn off operator one, that's right, sorry. So we're gonna uh, turn off op operator four and six, as well as one and three, and then make adjustments. And I'm gonna change the screen, okay. All right, so now it's a deck screen. Okay, so we have to turn on the operator four and six 
and we're gonna work on know which one's first operator six all right let's look at operator six so operator six teaching at the moment it's plus seven so let's hear the sound first so it's too much modulation not just too much modulation but also the tuning is too too wild you can say it's yeah it's not uh, giving a smooth um, sound so we're gonna change that so so we're gonna decrease this to tune to my plus six so it's getting slower and let's change to plus five Set it to plus four. Now you notice that the uh, chorus effect is slowing down. So you notice the chorus effect is slowing down. So at the moment it's plus four. We're going to reduce that. Put it to six digit to plus three. Yeah, you can hear that that's slowing down, which is good. And we're going to reduce that to plus two. Oh, really slow down. We'll try plus one. Here we go. That's a really nice uh, chorus effect there. It does have all this wild, kind of wild kind of pedal things going on, so which is good. You don't want that, not the electric piano sound like this one. Okay, so that's that. Change, I'm gonna switch the screen. Okay, so that's what we did. We worked on Opera 6, what's next? So we did that. Sorry. That's right. DX seven is yeah again. There's a difference with the uh, the tune. It's a DX seven is plus two, but uh, for the decks have to put it to plus one. Uh, now for operator four, we will keep operator four at zero because once we adjusted operator six, there's no need for us to adjust the operator four. So note that the operator 5 is minus 7, but as we use fixed frequency, there's no need for adjusting because fixed frequency basically determines the spot on the frequency. And regardless, regardless of key where the, where you, uh, which key you press, it's not going to change. And there's no point of adjusting ditching for that. And this is the result. So make sure that you set the operator 1 is plus 6, operator 3 is minus 4, uh, operator 4 is 0, operator 5, don't worry about that, operator 6 plus 1. Okay, so that's done. So that's the uh, detune. Now if we fix the detune, which is really, really critical for what's it called uh, electric piano like this. Okay, so let's turn on all of the operators. <coughs> so I'm gonna switch the screen. Okay, so operator two and operator five, and hear the sound. Bad, hey, not bad. So 
there still need to be adjustments made but yeah it's getting there which is good so I change the screen back okay so that's what we notice oops Ugh. sorry about that so the over course effect is much better yes because we just fixed that it has solid attack tone yes because of the operator file the hammer tone yeah what's missing there seems to be too much hammer tone with no expressiveness yes because that the operator five velocity sensitivities is zero so yeah, it doesn't have any expressiveness the sound still lacks sharp metric tone yes and there seems to be too much sustained tones yes excuse me so we will check keyboard rate scaling adjust output level and the key burst sensitivity <coughs> so are we getting there getting there keyboard rate scale okay so let's look at what's, what it's about <coughs> all right so check keyboard rate scaling for all operators by moving the mouse over keyboard rate scaling yes because it doesn't have a dedicated uh, little screen for that uh, key for rate scaling so we have to uh, move the mouse over <coughs> and look at the, uh, the little uh, display uh, underneath the text the logo underneath that little one yes yeah, it's, it's a bit confusing okay let's try that okay so let's look at the uh, here we are all right so keyboard rate scaling now where is it uh, let's get here it is it's um okay so i'm looking at the operator one it's operator one and the rate scaling is towards the bottom of operator one sections and it, you got the curve left curve and right curve that's a uh, uh, keyboard level scaling and it's it sits in the middle kind of weird because it's kind of mixed with the uh level scaling so it's a bit confusing uh, but this is here it's a rate scaling so here look at that uh, operator one let's case is three so operator two let's look at operator two uh, three uh, operator three three operator four is three yeah again operator five three operator six again it's three all right so what it's saying is that everything is <laughs> set up the same which is kind of that's which is okay because make it simpler <coughs> now so let's change the screen again and then going back to the uh, tutorial screen okay we've done that uh, so cover the sections now so what we want to do is that because hammer tone generated by operator 5 is set at 3 now the to hammer to emulate the hammer tone you only need a minimum uh, shortening of the hammer tone the envelope at higher notes so that uh, we don't need a uh, uh, keyboard rate scaling on 3 that's a bit too much uh, we can put the uh, keyboard rate scaling to 1 so just have a minimum shortening and that's sufficient so we're gonna change that uh, keyboard rate scaling. So I'm gonna switch over the scene. Here we go. Now e piano text e piano screen, and we're gonna change the rate scaling of operator five. So uh, operator five section by scaling knob sits between L curve and left uh, R curve left left and right curve or keyboard level scaling and we're gonna bring it down to one that's it so if you press key c3 and c5 here you go you can hear that the hammer tones at the c5 which one you want uh, right done okay so we're going to go back to tutorial screen so we cover that all right 
Ja, we gaan nu even de uh, output level. <coughs> so we gaan check output level again for all operators. There is no dedicated little screen for the output level. What they call, I think they call level. And uh, so we have to uh, use a mouse to uh, move over. Um, sorry, uh, move the mouse over the um, each knob and find the uh, I guess uh, exact uh, output level. So we're gonna change the screen. Okay, so that's a text screen there. So let's look at the level. Uh, so operator one, 99. Sorry, level is uh, so below the uh, just just underneath the the operator number. You got the operator one and so forth. The white uh, number and just below that, it's got level. That's the one. So output level is 99. Uh, operator one. Now operator two is 58. Now remember from the uh, uh, I guess um, just before we started the, the improvements. Uh, talked about the summary of the sound design and the operator 2. We already know that the output level is low, so 58 is quite low. That's why you don't really hear that metric sound. So we're gonna adjust that later on. Now operator 3 is 99. Now operator 1, operator 3 are carrier operators. So uh, in uh, adjusting uh, output level basically directly equates to that uh, volume of the sound so that's that's what uh, that's handy to remember that so now operator 4 89 operator 5 99 that's way too high just too much hammer tone operator 6 79 yeah okay so that's the output level change the screen So we did that. Yeah. So we will adjust out level of operator two first. To change it from 65, 70, 75, 80. Alright, so let's do that. I'm gonna change the scene and going back to sorry, go to that the uh, text uh, interface and then we're gonna change operator two output level. Now, if it's at the moment 58, so we're gonna increase that to uh, 65. Let's do that. Okay. Now you start here a little bit he hearing a bit more metric tone. Change to 70. Hearing uh, metallic tone much more than before. Okay, increase to seventy-five, and we're gonna increase the level uh, to what's it called? Eighty. That's right. What happened here is that um, as you increase the output level operator 2, it comes to a certain point where that the modulation, you got too much metallic tone, and the metallic tones uh, it's starting to use more additional harmonic, and that's kind of a characteristic of FM synthesis. So you have to kind of find a sweet spot uh, to have a, the balance of enough metallic tone, but not too much metallic tone. And so now, when when you seventy five kind of comfortable, but when it's go over seventy five, now eighty, no, be trying the eighty. That's it's just too much, and so I think it's somewhere between seventy to seventy five, is a sweet spot for the decks, and what we can do, it's bring it down. So that's going to be going down. Oh, it's going up, sorry. So 75. 
and we're gonna bring it down 75 to 73 so it's at the value between 70 to 70 to 75 it's kind of in the middle yeah that's nice metallic tone Let's got enough metallic tone there because we're gonna adjust the other sound as well. So you don't want to reduce too much, but you don't have too much either. And for the DX7, it's actually 78. So there's a big difference that's from 73 to 78. I found the 78 for the DX7 is kind of sweet spot. So let's go back uh, to the screen. There you go. So that's what the uh, I guess uh, explanation is about. Uh, so yeah, when we're over 75, there seems to be too much sharp metallic tone. So somewhere between 70 to 75, I find 73 is good. So we change that. Now ah, next one, what we need to change. So we cut up that. Okay, let's go. Okay, we will adjust output level of the 4. So we're gonna reduce it to from eight it's to eighty-five under eighty. Let's try that. It's gonna change the scene. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So operator four level. Uh, hold on a minute. Voice. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Output level eighty-nine. So we're gonna change that to eighty-five. Okay. I hear not that much difference. Yeah, it's hard to hear the difference. So we're gonna reduce it to eighty. That's the way. going to be quieter so what we're going to do is to put it back to 85 uh, because output level of operator for output levels seems to be adequate at 85 now for the dx7 is 88 again there's a difference there okay so that's done what's next Um, okay, so we will adjust output level of the fat. Oh, sorry, this is a little sharp pain here. Try 90. If it's too much, then reduce to 87. Okay, so uh, remember from the two tutorials, uh, that's what we did. We put a set the hammer tone for two bells about 90, or I think it was 87, something like that. So that's what we're gonna do. So I change the scene, screen to the, the interface, text interface, and we're gonna change output level operator five. So at the moment, 99, that's just too much. So that's what we. Uh, you can't hear the uh, ship. So if you got too much modulation going on at the tag, and that the uh, the metallic tone it loses its sharpness, so we want to kind of reduce that. Uh, no, 90, let's hear the 90. And we can reduce it to 87. Just remember that we still have to adjust the operator 6, so we're going to set it to 87. And when the operator 6 adjusted, the 87, that's the, uh, what the operator 5, the output level, it's going to be that sweet spot. So just, just to let you know. Yeah. So you don't have to do um, a lot of um, 
I guess, uh, what do you call it, the um, experimentation, but, oh, just this, just it, uh, watch the better ones. Uh, fine tuning can take, take a lot of time, so I kind of helping you to uh, speed up the process. Uh, you can do fine tuning on your time and uh, just try to find out if you can you know, adjust the, uh, the, the the sound that I created. So we cover this section. We're going to oh, try to skip this. No, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we will adjust out the level operator 6. That's the last one to adjust. So we're going to try 75, 70, and 65. Okay, so switch the screen. Oh, sorry, I forgot to change the screen. My apology. Uh, so we will adjust output level of the six. So try 75, 70, and 65. So that's what we got. Okay, all right. So put the six now, level 79. We're gonna put it to 75. It's a slight decrease in it, uh, sustain tone because at the moment it's just too much, so we're going to reduce that. So we're going to try 70. All right. 70. So we got a bit too much sound there, so we're going to adjust to 65. Okay. So that's a really nice, uh, I guess, setting there. So 65, you still got enough, um, I guess, sustained tone, not sustained tone, the, the decay tone, that main decay tone, the kind of soft, you can say like sawtooth type soft tone, but it's not too much, not like before overpowering. Um, so that's a good sign there. So. So we're going to set that operator 6 level to 65. I'm going to change the screen. Yeah, so we're setting that uh, to 65. And as you can see from this table here, that's the setting. Yeah, that's the final setting that we're going to have. And so operator 2, output, the output level or level. Operator 2 is 73. Operator 4 is 85. Operator 5 is 87, Operator 6 is 65. Okay, that's done. It's pretty good. It's nearly there. Uh, so we're gonna I'm going to change the scene, sorry. And we're going to cover the last bit. So we've done that part. Uh, yeah. It's been covered. Keyboard velocity sensitivity. So that's the last parameter that we're going to work on. And it's, so we're going to adjust that to give a better expressiveness. So what we're going to do is check the velocity setting first. And to do, to, to do, to, uh, sorry, to do that, uh, you need to uh, use this, use the mouse and hover over the, the velocity knob and find the value. So change the scene. Go back to the text uh, interface, and we're going to check the uh, uh, keyword sensitivity, sensitivity for each operator. So it's so if you look at operator one, keyword velocity sensitivity is just below the uh, the operator number next to that uh, level output level. So if you just move the mouse over the uh, knob. Uh, operator one set it to two. Uh, operator 2 is 7, Operator 3 is 2, Operator 4 is 6, Operator 5 is 0, Operator 6 is 6. Okay. Uh, 
now. So what we're going to do is, as operator 5 has no keyword sensitivity, so we're going to adjust that. And we, so we're going to give a bit of expressiveness to operator 5, the hammer tone. So we set it to operate, uh, what about the uh, velocity to 3, and that's what I think that's what we did with two velocity improvement tutorial as well. Okay, let's do that. That's quite simple. Change the scene. Okay, so put it to 5. Velocity is at the moment it's 0, so we're going to increase that to 3. All right, so that's that done. Let's listen to that. Here you go. That's very nice because it's uh, it doesn't have the what about the the uh, hammer tone the changes with the velocity. You can hear that. You can hear the difference. Very good. So that was very simple. So going back to that the tutorial screen. Yeah, and let me just think about that. Okay. So basically, this is the end of pretty much near the end of the uh, uh, this tutorial live stream session. Now we have uh, the new piano sound. And uh, that's right. And uh, let's go through, quickly go through what we've done. Uh, sorry. Okay. So we change the algorithm from five to thirteen. Check. We create a hammer tone using operator five by adjusting its fixed frequency and envelope generator. Check. Yeah, and we adjust it to to give a smooth chorus effect. Check. Uh, let's see. We adjusted keyboard ray scaling from operator four operator five from three to one. Check. And we adjusted output level to have a balance of sharp and solid attack with soft sustained tone check and the last one we set keyboard sensitivity sensitivity for operator 5 giving expressiveness to the new electric piano part check particularly the hammer tone so okay so that's that so yeah uh, please uh, subscribe to Padic sim channel and um, uh, I think next one is going to be uh, sound design uh, for teams improvement. So we're going to go to the similar exercise as APN1, sorry, APN1 uh, to create, uh, uh, to basically improve the flutings uh, because, uh, yeah, you can do, uh, you can make it really good, like this one's here. So let's just play that sound there. As you can hear, we uh, basically we uh, we took the uh, we took advantage of using the FM synthesis to generate a sharp metallic tone. At the same time, with that expressiveness, we can have a really soft and mellow sound as well. And having the 
having the solid uh, uh, ham having the hammer tone makes uh, the sound different. So if you turn it off, operator five, let's try that. Uh, so let's go back to that uh, screen there. So what we're gonna do is just 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 prove ourselves that uh, ourselves that we actually made a really good uh, electric piano sound. Turn off operator five and then listen to the sound there. Now you can hear the sharp metallic tone, but it doesn't have the oomph, you know, kind of strength of bang bang. I don't know how to explain that in, <laughs> in English. I can probably explain better in Japanese, but yeah, it doesn't have that solid attack tone. It's just a metallic tone. And operator five, turn on operator five, and it makes a difference. The hammer tone, that slight hammer tone that you can hear. It makes a difference. So if you put it through the effect, effect chorus and reverb, it's it's yeah, it's very very different. It makes it really good for um, you know if you wanna try um live performance or you know if you create your own music and put some um, like I said you know really good um, electric piano sound that can kind of rival the sampled uh, electric piano sound this one is that one that kind of stands out so yeah using the DX7 FM synthesis uh, taking you know full advantage of that FM synthesis and creating this uh, sharp metallic tone okay so uh, Thank you for joining this session and if you got any question on the uh, this uh, tutorials about the uh, e-piano uh, got a bit of time to answer a question for you uh, thank you for uh, joining the session if you have questions about the new e-piano So yeah, if you got any questions around this uh, electric piano sound, let me know. Otherwise, uh, yeah, uh, you can do. Uh, we can finish off and then uh, just enjoy that. Uh, enjoy the uh, new electric piano sound and put on your recording. And we're using the live. Yep, you can do. You can use it in any way that you like. It's a really good electric piano sound. So. And the interesting is that, uh, yeah, um, probably, well, yeah, about around two years ago, I uh, started uh, going back to sound design on DX again, and um, I look at it on the internet, and there's hardly any, I guess you can say, different electric piano sound than the original electric piano sound, I think interesting it's, it's very interesting because people kind of look at those piano sounds yeah that's it but they can't kind of oh, okay what else can we do with this piano can we change this can we put this or can we put that so i was i was really interested also that was really interesting and of course the you know algorithm that they use you know supposed to be different piano sound like a road type still using algorithm five or six so nothing has really changed, you know, so, um, for over thirty years. The DX is, is more thirty years old. So I thought that was interesting, and it's you know basically I'm giving you guides to kind of explore using different algorithms, and you get get different result, and often it's going to be much much better than original song because that. Uh, 
you notice that the algorithm 13 or 12 gives better clear sharp and solid uh, sound than that the algorithm far because of the way that the fm synthesis work you got you know three modulators kind of feeding into that the single carrier so you got operator four five six and you got the carrier operator three so you can you know adjust the uh, frequency ratio output level and have a different kind of i guess harmonics or that you know if frequency modulation fit into operator three and it gives a different very different result and that's why the uh, this uh, electric piano sound it's really really good and same as the tube bell sounds you can play around with you know different setting of frequency ratio and stuff like that and you get a very different result and it gives a better i guess uh, you know you can make harmonic richer sound that the uh, um, original tube bell sound so this is same for the same for that electric piano sound so okay so now for the explanation so if you have uh, if you don't have questions around the uh, new electric piano sound piano piano patch but I can spell <laughs> must be right patch and uh, we can finish off finish off this uh, session so thank you very much and I hope you uh, learned a lot about uh, about yeah, FM synthesis and sound design of electric piano. So yeah, so if you guys got no questions, uh, I'd like to I'd like to say thank you. Very much for joining these sessions. Um, and I hope you learned a lot about the FM synthesis and sound design of electric pianos using DX7 DX you know, FM synthesis. Other way to improve that way to use different algorithms, and of course you know you can try you know algorithm instead of thirteen something else. So anything is possible. Uh, all you have to do is just try, and the patience persistence and then you get something really good out from that as well so so if there's no question uh, if there's no questions, uh, questions I will end this session so thank you and see you later okay so if there's no questions, um, I'll end the, the session. And thank you very much. And I'd uh, like to see you later again, um, next sessions. Uh, either next week, uh, next week is probably, no, I've got something, uh, uh, some Christmas function that I need to attend. So the week after I can post the, uh, trying to post the bilingual Bodyguard tutorials, uh, text tutorial, the tutorial that I need to post. Thank you for now. Yep. So, anyway, thank you very much and see you later. Thank you and see you later. Bye. So, thank you very much. Bye bye. Stop live stream. So, stop in live stream. See you later. Okay.